Question. How many people think pharma companies are, have, have been making money? How many people think they've been losing money? How many people think they've been losing money over the last 10 years? How many people think they've been losing money? Well, no one raised their hands, but let me tell you. Since two, for Pfizer, for example, since 2012, has lost nearly $25 billion. In 2012, they made about $65 billion, and in 2021, they made about $43 billion. So pharma companies have been losing money because what is a drug? A drug is a single molecule that doesn't exist in nature like ibuprofen, Advil. So pharma companies have been losing money. Massive regulation, it takes 15 years to get a drug through the market. You gotta go through testing, testing, testing. Vaccines don't require anywhere near the amount of testing. 17% growth, and you can't sue vaccine manufacturers. All right? Thank you to Ted Kennedy and Orrin Hatch. They passed a law which says you cannot sue vaccine companies. So imagine this. You, you're, you wanna enter an industry that is highly regulated. You can get sued, which is big pharma. And now there's this industry over here, you can't get sued. You gotta go to a vaccine court. You don't have to even prove this stuff works because it's considered a biologic, not a vaccine. So what's happened is the pharmaceutical makers have wanted to move into the vaccine industry. All right? That's what's, it's follow the money. So what's happened is in the last four years, they've executed on that plan. So a multi-trillion dollar industry is burning down called old pharma. They need to move into vaccine manufacturing. So that's the first thing, Mike. The second thing from a scientific standpoint is one size does not fit all. That's what came out of 2007 in systems biology. We need to move to the right medicine for the right person at the right time. What Mike needs to take for his immune health may be very different than what you know, Mark, Mark needs to take versus what I need to take. Our chemistries are different, our biologies are different, et cetera. What they want to do is to give one size fits all medicine. So from a scientific isn't, standpoint- Isn't it true though too last summer when they had all the hydroxychloroquines, I had something brought to me, yep. all these things. I had a friend of mine, very high IQ, and he went out there and it was a, he said there was over 40, 30 things that worked that helped people. Now, is it true that, because this is what I've heard, that in order for them to have an emergency use, there, there couldn't be anything else out there that worked. Now, this is what I heard, so they suppressed that so that it would only be one thing. And I mean, what, it, it should be, you know, your choice, whatever, whatever you want to do. Well, well, more importantly, Mike, in 2019, to any of the news people, you know, I'm considered one of the leading guys on the immune system in the world. The National Science Foundation in 2019 had me deliver their prestige lecture on the immune system. So if you go back to 1962 when the National Vaccination Act was passed, we had a very two-box model of the immune system. It said, you create antibodies or you don't create antibodies, okay? You have the innate immune system and the adaptive, and that was it, two boxes. So the whole goal of immunization was get antibodies. That was why 1962 Vaccination Act. Well, we know today the immune system is in two boxes. You have your gut microbiome, you have the interferon system, you have the gut-brain axis. We, we have six trillion cells, but we have 300 trillion bacteria and viruses, okay? We are a walking jungle. So the point is the immune system is a very complex system. So it's not just about antibodies. So the entire vaccination model is just boost up antibodies and you're okay. So why, so why would they, if any, everyone's got a choice to have it or not now, what's wrong with that choice? Why do they keep doing, like I was in Nevada and they're offering people money to win a lottery to go take it. Mike, Mike you know. imagine if everyone said everyone's got to buy pillows. Like you can't live without a pillow, you have to buy a pillow. Pillow manufacturers would love They'd it. They'd all be looking at yeah. me going, uh, what's, that's a bad rule. Right, right. No, no, but what I'm trying to say is if you try to say everyone's got to get vaccinated, you have just created a wonderful, you know, complete monopoly, a monopoly for vaccine manufacturers. So forget all the thousands, tens of thousands of years, there are antivirals in nature that have existed. Forget the fact that you have the gut microbiome, which you can beef up, right? Forget the fact that you have the interferon system, which goes and unleashes natural killer cells. There are people who don't have any antibodies, but they have completely strong immune systems. 
for that. You're saying it could be money behind it because they were losing money for years. There is. Whoa. (laughs) No, no. The the bottom line is vaccine industry is growing at 17 percent. Pharma drug industry is crashing and burning. It's the only way out for vaccine manufacturers. They I mean, pharma, they need to move into vaccines. And think about it. Imagine, Mike, you were in the airplane industry and you didn't have to do testing. If your planes fell out of the sky, you can't sue them. Right. That's what vaccines are. But, but then why would, why would the government be telling, why would they care about that? Well, let's talk about politicians who yeah, funds yeah, them, yeah. Okay? okay? I All mean, right. <laughs> when you look at 